Welcome back to your free Active Directory training course. In this video, I will look at installing the first domain controller and thus creating an Active Directory environment. Before you start setting up a domain controller using Windows Server 2008, there are first a few prerequisites that you need to meet. First, you need to ensure that Windows Server 2008 has a static IP address. Next, Active Directory requires DNS infrastructure to work. If you do not have any existing DNS infrastructure, you can install Microsoft DNS during the domain controller install. Later on in the course, I will cover DNS in a lot more detail. For the present, I will install DNS with the domain controller accepting all the defaults. This way, I can concentrate on Active Directory. I promise that later in the course, I will cover DNS in a lot more detail. Active Directory requires DNS infrastructure, but it does not have to be Microsoft's. If you have an existing DNS infrastructure, such as Unix-based DNS, you can use that as well. The next prerequisite that needs to be met for your first domain controller is that you need to ensure that you are a member of the local administrators group. Once you are ready to install your first domain controller, or add an additional domain controller to any existing network, run the command dcpromo. The process of changing a server into a domain controller is called promotion. It is common for people to say, I'm going to promote this server to a domain controller. I will now change to my Windows Server 2008 server to demonstrate the process of promoting a server to a domain controller. I have already installed a fresh, clean install of Windows Server 2008 R2 on this computer. When the server boots up for the first time, you will be presented with the initial configuration task screen. In order to make this server a domain controller, I first need to assign it a static IP address. To do this from the initial configuration tasks, select the option Configure Networking. This will show all the network adapters on your server. From here, open the properties on the network adapter. In this case, I will configure an IP version 4 address. You could also configure an IP version 6 address, or both if you preferred. Domain controllers work equally well with either or both. Notice when I set the DNS server's IP address, I have set it to 127.0. Dot o dot one. This is the loopback IP address. This will direct all DNS queries back to this server. Since I will install DNS at the same time I promote this server to a domain controller, this is not a problem. Once I exit out of the network configuration, in the initial configuration tasks I also get the option to change the computer name. If I go into here, notice that I have already set the computer name to DC1. Changing the computer name does require a restart. I would recommend changing the computer name and rebooting the server before promoting the server to a domain controller. If you change the computer name and don't reboot the server, this may cause some problems with promoting the server later on. Right down at the bottom, you have the option Add Roles. This will launch the Add Role Wizard. You could also get to this step by running Server Manager from the Start menu and selecting the option Add Roles. Once past the Welcome screen, select Active Directory Domain Services from the list of roles. Active Directory Domain Services requires a .NET framework, so you will be prompted to add this as well. Once I next my way to the Install part of the wizard, I am ready to install Active Directory Domain Services. Notice that I was not asked any configuration questions. All I was given was an information screen about Active Directory Domain Services. Just to prove a point, I will now cancel the wizard and thus not install the role. If I had finished the wizard, the server would not have been promoted to a domain controller. Remember that to promo a server to a domain controller, you need to run the command dcpromo. To do this, I will open a command prompt. Notice that when I run dcpromo, it will check to see if the Active Directory binaries are installed, and if not, it will install them. 
The process does take a few minutes to complete. If you know in advance that you are going to promote a server to a domain controller, often an administrator will install the Active Directory Domain Services role ahead of time using Server Manager. By doing this, you save time promoting the server to a domain controller because you don't have to wait for the binaries to be installed. Since the process does take a few minutes, I will fast forward the wizard. In this example, I will run the wizard in basic mode. Notice that you have the option Use Advanced Mode Installation. Later on in the course, I will cover these options. In this example, I will keep it simple and stick to the basic mode. On the next screen, you have a warning about old NT style cryptography and Windows Server 2008. This is only a problem if you have Windows NT computers or devices that use old style cryptography. Microsoft has raised the bar with Windows Server 2008 in regard to the cryptography that it supports. By default, these old clients will not be able to use a Windows Server 2008 domain controller. On Windows Server 2008, you can change some settings so that older clients can use Windows Server 2008. On Windows Server 2008 R2, these clients are not able to use Windows Server 2008 R2 by design. You cannot change a setting and enable them. Once past this warning screen, you need to decide if these servers are joining an existing forest or creating a new forest. Since this is the first domain controller that I am deploying, it will be on a new forest. Next, I need to type in the FQDN, or Fully Qualified Domain Name, for the domain. In this case, I will use ITFreeTraining.local. In this case, I could also use ITFreeTraining.com since I own the domain name. The choice of a public domain name or a private domain, like .local, will be different depending on the company's security needs. Using .local offers more security because it cannot be resolved from the Internet. No DNS server on the Internet will be able to resolve this domain name back to a client. If you use a .com address, the problem occurs because you are probably going to have some hosts that need to be resolved by computers on the Internet. Most likely, addresses such as www and your mail servers. When you use the same DNS namespace for the computers on your internal network as your public computers, you risk the DNS records for your internal networking being captured by an external party if you don't secure them correctly. Whether or not you feel this is a big risk is up to you. Active Directory also supports adding UPN, or Universal Principal Names. Using a UPN, you could create a domain such as .local and add a .com UPN. The UPN would allow the user to log in using the .com address. For example, Joe at itfreetraining.local could log on using his address or using joe at itfreetraining.com. Either address will work just as well. The advantage of using UPNs is that all your DNS records in your domain will still be using the .local address. If a hacker were to get a hold of your DNS records, if designed correctly, they would only be able to get a hold of your public DNS records and not the internal DNS records used by your company. Once Windows verifies that no other domain controllers are on the network using the same name, the wizard will move on. The forest function level I will talk about later on in the course. For the present, know that you can raise a forest level to a higher level, but you cannot go back. The higher the forest level, the more features. Currently, the forest level is set to Windows Server 2003. This means that only domain controllers that are Windows Server 2003 or above can be added to this forest. If you are not sure what setting to use, set it low. You can always raise it later. The choice of forest level only affects domain controllers. Which setting you use has no bearing on which computers you can use on your network. On the next screen is a domain functional level. The same applies to the domain function level. You can raise it 
but you cannot lower it. We will talk more about forest and domain functions level in a later video. If you are not sure, select the lowest level. You can always raise it later. Just remember, the domain level you set here determines which domain controller operating systems you can add to the domain. On the next screen, you can select to install Microsoft DNS Server at the same time the server is promoted. Since this is the first domain controller, I cannot set any additional options. Later in the course, I will go over these options. If you are using an existing DNS infrastructure, you could deselect the DNS option. Once I press Next, I will get a warning message. This message states that Windows could not find a delegation for the DNS zone. In simple language, this means that no DNS zone could be found for IT free training. Since DNS has not been installed yet, this is to be expected. When Active Directory is installed, it will create the missing DNS zone for you automatically. The next screen will ask you where you want to store the Active Directory database. In this case, I will leave them on the same hard drive. On a busy domain controller, you may want to consider putting the database on a separate hard disk. You could also put the log files on a separate hard disk if you wanted to. The log files record changes as they happen, allowing the database to be recovered if the hardware was to suddenly crash. The next option is the sysvol folder. This folder contains all the login scripts and group policy settings for the domain. This data is replicated throughout the domain to every domain controller in the domain. In most cases, you will leave this on the defaults. The next screen will ask you for a directory services restore mode password. This password is different from any other username and password on the system. It does not allow you access to the domain or to any services. It is included to provide access to the database for recovery tools when things go wrong. It kind of provides a backdoor, if you will. In a later video, I will go through how to use this password with the recovery tools. For the present, choose a password that you are going to remember. The next screen of the wizard gives you a summary of all the settings that you have configured. Notice that I have an Export Settings button. When I press this button, I can save the settings that I used for this install to a file. If you are planning on installing another domain controller later on, you can use this file to automate the install so you don't have to answer all the questions in the wizard again. This file I will also use in the next video installing Active Directory on Server Core. Once the settings have been exported and I press Next, Active Directory domain services will now start installing. The process of installing Active Directory for the first time does take some time to complete. You have the option to automatically reboot the server once complete. However, I will leave this clear and speed up the video to the end. The wizard took about five minutes to complete. I now reboot the server and return once it has started back up again. Once the server has rebooted and I have logged back in again, notice that once again I am taken to the initial configuration task screen. Notice at the bottom the roles DNS Server and Active Directory Domain Services have now been installed. Since I have finished with the initial configuration of this server, I will tick the box Do Not Show This Window at Logon and close initial configuration tasks. When I close this window, Windows will automatically open Server Manager. From Server Manager, if I select Roles, I can see the Active Directory Domain Services Roles Administration section. Under this is the section Active Directory Users and Computers. Active Directory Users and Computers is where you can add and remove users from the domain. This tool can also be used from the Start menu under Administrative Tools without the need to open Server Manager. Server Manager, however, does group a lot of tools together, making it easier to configure your server. If I open Users, I can see all the default users that are present in this domain. One of the things I want to point out is if I open Local Users and Groups from the Start menu.
If you have configured local users on Windows Server or clients such as Windows 7, you would have used a tool like this one. Once I open the local users in groups, notice that I get an error message. When you promote a server to a domain controller, the local users on the domain controller are no longer available. This only happens on domain controllers. Local users are not as secure as domain users and disabling the local users helps protect the domain controller. Without local users, if you need to give access to a folder or resource on a domain controller, you would simply use a domain user or group rather than a local user or group. If I now open Windows Explorer and open the Windows folder and the subfolder NTDS, this is where the Active Directory database is stored. Notice the file ntds.dit. This is essentially the heart of Active Directory. Notice there are also a number of other files in this folder as well. These files are the log files. These do not hold Active Directory data, but can be used to help recover Active Directory if there is a problem. If I go back a directory and open the sysvol folder, this is the folder that contains all the login scripts and group policies. This folder is replicated to all domain controllers in your domain. Notice under the domain folder you have the folders policies and scripts. Policies holds group policy while scripts holds login scripts. In most cases you will not have to edit data directly in here. Microsoft supplies a lot of tools that edit the files directly for you. In some troubleshooting scenarios, it pays to understand where these files are located. If I now go back to Server Manager, there is a section just for Active Directory domain services. This will show you any events that have been generated and the services used with Active Directory. There is also a section for documentation including best practices. The service that I would like to point out in particular is Active Directory Domain Services. This service can be stopped and Active Directory will be stopped. This means that Active Directory can be restarted without having to reboot the server. Previously, you would need to reboot the server to restart Active Directory. Now that I have installed my first domain controller and thus created a domain, the next step is to add a second domain controller. This will be the topic of the next video in which I will install Active Directory on Server Core. For the rest of this course, please have a look at our webpage or YouTube channel. Once again, thanks for watching.